Jack here, owner of Hockey Alley, bringing you hockey history and sticks, that is. Today I have special guest, uh, Holmes Gassimi. How are you, Holmes? Doing well, Jack. Good to speak with you again. Thank you. We did uh, two segments uh, earlier, about two weeks ago, uh, where you created the Synergy Stick and the Stealth, and it was awesome to talk about the Eastons. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, it, it definitely took me... Uh, Took me back for sure. It was uh, you know, it was fun times. And, yeah, uh, it was good. Good to talk to you about it. Yes, and uh, I wanted to mention that you also started up Warrior Hockey. Yeah, that's actually that's where I went after Easton. Um, the Warrior Warrior was a uh, was a lacrosse company uh, that was a subsidiary of New Balance, and um, you know, they they got they gotten uh, bought out by New Balance. Um, Sometime before they were, you know, New Balance was looking to build out their hard goods mm -hmm. uh, business at the time, um, so they were they were you know, they were trying to redefine who they were going forward as a, as a company, and uh, Warrior was was part of that. Uh, I think they were, they were looking for Warrior to be the brand for everything that wasn't you know um, running related. To be honest with you, anything that wasn't footwear or apparel, they wanted it to be Warrior and. Uh, Warrior was looking for like a counter seasonal business uh, to the lacrosse business, and uh, a mutual friend of uh, the president of the company and, my, and mine uh, put us together and we just chat over a period of time, and and I eventually went over to uh, to start up the hockey business and to also to run their uh, lacrosse like the marketing for the whole company. So, oh wow, that was a uh, it was it was fun. Yeah, it was it was a good challenge. They were. Uh, They were, they were a fun company because they um, um, had some of the, like, the DNA of, of, of uh, like, irreverent companies like Mission, you know, mm -hmm. previously. Like, I remember when Mission came into roller hockey, it was, yeah. like, their attitude that they brought to the sport was completely different than, uh, you know, the, the traditional hockey yeah. Um, mindset. So, yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was a good time. It wasn't there very long, but it was a good time. Yeah. What, uh, what sticks did you do? Um work on there that you created well i i uh i launched the the initial line uh okay. there essentially you know what we ended up doing was we uh we acquired innovative um mm -hmm. and uh we kind of say and it was, it was another you know obviously that that's i'm sure your listeners know that is a, a hockey stick manufacturer that the man manufactured out of mexico and they're a california-based company and uh, they actually they uh they made the sticks for nike which is uh, how I met the owner uh, of the company back when I was, you know, back when I was uh, working in the pro rooms for Nike. Um, and yeah, it was just, uh, it was a fit, you know, after we discussed it internally at Warrior to see what we wanted to do, whether we want to go to Asia or, 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 you know, have, have a Mexican manufacturing. Mm -hmm. We, uh, we ended up acquiring innovative and it was just at that point, it was like, all right, you know, we need to come out with a line. What are their capabilities? What are what, what do they do well? You know, what can we what we what can we come out with as, a, as the first uh, you know yeah. in, like the, in introductory line of sticks? And um, the the two big ones, I mean, the two like performance level sticks that we came out with that year one was uh, the Mac Daddy and the Dolomite. I remember those. <laughs> yeah, those are awesome. Yeah, so those. <laughs> Those were, yeah, it was. It was. It, it was for me. It was such a departure, marketing wise, from Easton. You know, because Easton was much more structured and traditional in the way, like we approached. Uh, we approached marketing and, and like the the brand and the image that we projected. And, and Warrior was not. Man. <laughs> Warrior was just basically you know, just anything went, and uh, you know anything that was fun, uh, they were open to. So. We had a we had a we had a good time throwing things, you know, just throwing stuff at the wall to see what made sense and uh, yeah. what was what would look good. So yeah, interesting. Did you um, yeah. the colors of the Mac Daddy originally were lime green? Was that your idea? Yeah. Okay, I, I love well, that. There, there was oh. a, as I, as I was coming at like as I was trying to do the, do that line, yeah. I was I was trying to tie in a little bit to like war, what warrior was doing uh in lacrosse like i wanted a little bit of continuity you know just so like i didn't want to just set up a brand completely independent of the lacrosse brand mm -hmm. and um they had they actually the mac daddy name um existed in their in their uh, uh equipment line oh. they, i know they had they had like they had a mac daddy glove 
Mm-hmm. And uh, the, the logo had kind of that lime and orange, and, and I kind of used that as the departure point. Like, I'm like, all right, so we want to incorporate this, and we want to put it. And then the Mac Daddy was also their, their top of the line um, brand or sub brand. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we did, we did that, uh, you know, uh, real one piece, like the true one piece stick in the, in the Mac Daddy, uh, you know, both colors, and, and uh, we kind of tied the top. The, the high end color that Warrior had with their with the high end the product that we were we were designing at uh, Innovative so mm-hmm. or with Innovative at that time and uh, the Dolomite um, honestly I was just like I'm like okay Mac Daddy what's the next stick you know and, and Dolomite just it was a line from a Beastie Boys song you know I was like oh okay that's cool so we'll do that <laughs> and we just we just did the reverse of uh, of the colors like we incorporated the 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 lime and the uh, and the orange, but we did it on like a black substrate, so it was yeah. a little bit more, little, 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 little less to look at. But it was still, it was still really difficult for uh, for guys at the, at the pro level uh, when that came out. So well, that, I like that, the orange. That, though. Actually, <laughs> the, the orange. I mean, it's. But well, I'll tell you, this is this is the story. This yeah. is this was the defining story for me. Um, and uh, I don't know, we, we might have discussed this previously, but I don't think um, recorded. No. But uh, we were uh, we were doing a line review, and uh, it was in 2005. So the the Canadian Olympic summer camps were going. So all the guys who were going to the to Torino in 06 were at, at a camp, and it kind of coincided with when we were when we were you know launching our, our sticks in the NHL. And there were there were a handful of guys uh, we had there, and our and our pro guy happened to be in our meeting. <laughs> he, mm-hmm. he had his he had his Bluetooth in, and he, the guy was losing his mind. I could just see him like outside the the office, like pacing back and forth, and you know, and like he just he looked uncomfortable. So he came in and he like kind of he, he hands me the Bluetooth. And he's like, "You need to talk to Drapes." I'm like, "What? What?" Are, <laughs> we're like in the middle of a meeting. We were talking about Chris Draper, who apparently was always shocked by the color of the sticks, and and then it turned out he was he was saying that like everyone was laughing at him, and everyone you know, everyone walking by was like making a comment, and uh, and this it, 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 as it happened, you know, both the you know the, the president of New Balance and the president of Warrior were in the room while this was going on, so this is the first time I ever sat in a, you know in a room in a meeting with the president of New Balance and like this you know, this like circus going on, and I just I, I looked at him and said, listen, man. You're telling me that everyone's freaking about the colors, and all I'm hearing is everyone's noticing the colors. End of story. Like that's it. <laughs> like this is. Sometimes you just have to you have to push past. Yeah. These uh, you know these 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 bars that are set, like bars of of uh, expectation and tolerance, you know, for for something a little out there. Um, yeah. And that was you know that's that for me came from from my Nike roots. Like Nike, you know, we 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 fell on our face a lot. But uh, what there are two things that Nike Hockey did for the for the hockey industry. One is that they they, they might not have helped the consumers, but the two things they did for the hockey industry was that they established um, new higher price points. You know, again, yeah. Nike was the first five hundred dollars skate in the market. Wow. Um, I'm not saying it was the best skate in the market, but it was the first hundred dollars skate in the market, and it was it was a white skate, so it was also established a fashion forward look. That was being pushed onto onto uh, uh, into the, you know uh, pushed into the marketplace and and to some extent onto uh, professional hockey players. Mm-hmm. So when you when you go from the mid nineties um, to what equipment looked like and what it costs to today, um, you know a lot of that honestly was was Nike. As as much as the company like the standalone company in its first iteration didn't succeed, they fell on the grenade for the industry on those two fronts. You know, like yeah. the, 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 the Dolomite can't happen if Nike doesn't have a white skate, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. So, so it really, it really allowed for some of that stuff to, to, to take place. Um, so yeah, yeah. but, but, um, good, I mean, good, you know, it's, there was, there was so much more that I wanted to do there, obviously, you know, and yeah. things, things didn't, didn't quite go the way I, I, uh, anyone had planned, I suppose, mm-hmm. but, uh, yeah, you know, we had a, it was also the, the third stick. I think I sent you a picture of this one. We did a like a holiday limited edition. It was basically a Dolomite. Oh yeah, with a little bit yeah, light, yeah. lighter package, but we called it the Starsky. You know, oh, and, yeah. and it was just like <laughs> you know, cherry red stick with like the Starsky and Hutch. I don't know how old your listeners are, but 
you know, the Starsky and Hutch car from the seventies with like the, the white stripe down the side. So that, that, that was my personal favorite stick, you know, cause, um, I don't know. It just, it just spoke to something in, from my childhood, I guess. And it's and, rare, uh, right? It's rare. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's, uh, I, I want to say that how many I want to say Chris make? Pronger ended up using that stick in the Olympics because it was red and white, but uh, it was a, it was like a limited edition, you know. It just really didn't it didn't have uh, it didn't have a big run. I forget how many we made, but whatever we made, we sold, and that was it. Um, but yeah, that was that was a fun one too. Yeah, I, I like the Mac Daddy out of all of them. That was my mm -hmm. favorite stick. Uh, it was just yes. launching pucks with that. Uh, and also, yeah. I remember the Nike Apollo. Did you work on that one? Well, I was at Nike. I was the uh, I was, oh, I was right. a pro rep there. Oh, okay, you know, so I I would bring I would bring whatever feedback from the pros that I could to the to the guys developing the sticks, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, both both from the manufacturing side and the product product management side. Um, but you know, the sticks that that you know in those first two years of Nike, the 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 two the two models that were um, being provided. And uh, po you know, pushed to some extent at the NHL level were were the uh, uh, the Troika, which was that like kind of the asymmetrical design. You know, it was like the concave convex. Oh yeah. With the with the red stick and it had the white face with the uh, with like the shark skin white face on it, so it had a little bit of tack and it was red on the outside. And um, that was like kind of like the lightweight. It, you know, it's kind of like it was like an ultra light, but with a different shape. Is and that then the there one was the, off the catamount. Is that which the, was the, uh, oh, sorry. Is, it, is that the one no, Fedorov no, used? The red and white, was that the one that Fedorov used? Is that the one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It. I mean, he, okay. he uh, yeah, they, were, they, were, they were like Hall used it for a bit. Uh, there, there, were, you know, there were guys that would use it, but, but um, it was tough keeping guys in it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so you get like a 20. And then there was also like the, the flurry. Flurry was was the one guy who who I had a lot of success with in getting him to kind of um, go with the gear, and he, he yeah he was he was kind of a flashy player, and he, he mm -hmm. kind of liked that look, you know. So he was he actually was was a guy we ended up signing as an endorsement athlete, uh, oh, nice. but he was he was all in, you know. He wore everything, and he gave feedback on on the performance and the feel of the product. He was uh, he was pretty good from that standpoint. Nice. But uh, but yeah, but Fedorov, you know, Fedorov was. Uh, uh, Fedorov was a guy, you know, who we we really had to kind of uh, reverse engineer uh, an ultralight, you know, to to get him comfortable with our Troika. Like he didn't, he used a square shaft. Like color makeup on it was red and white, but it was a square shaft. Mm -hmm. it was, you know, so yeah. and similar kick points and all that to an ultralight. And uh, and obviously he he stayed in the Christian blade for as long as he was in the two piece. So yeah. And, uh, yeah, uh, which uh, I want to ask you, which is the first company was a graphite company that made shafts? Was it Fontaine or was it Innovative or was it Easton? Oh, man, that's a that's a, it, it, what, I don't believe it was Easton. Either. I think the ultralight came after the mm -hmm. came after the Fontaine um, or if, if anything might have been around the same time. Fontaine was a California company, too, right? Yeah, Sacramento. Yeah, so they so all three, like all three first, like first composite um, of the of the first three that you know, in, you know, and and Fontaine and Easton, they're all California companies, which is so bizarre when you think about it, like for like hockey, hockey, <laughs> hockey stick innovations. But um, uh, I, you know, the, fir the first time I ever saw um, an ultralight was probably in ninety four, ninety five. So I don't know if I was late to the party on that one, but. But I remember, I remember, I remember the first innovative I saw was Kovalev using it because I was living, you know, I was in New York and I was a Ranger fan and Kovalev was using an innovative in maybe 93, you know. I think they came was, out in uh, 93, their first uh, was the yeah. 700 model yeah. and they had the 400 model, which was very square. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah. So, I mean, I, I saw that. I was like, wow, that's interesting. You know, and I was, uh, I was also at that time I was working in retail you know so i you know I, the, so the first uh trade show i saw them at was probably the 95 or 96 trade show i saw innovative fontaine um it was uh, to me was uh robotai like that yeah. when i think of the fontaine yeah. shaft i think of robotai i mean i i forget 
when you know, but it was around that say, around that time. It might might have been maybe a year year after Innovative or, or a year before maybe, but it was around the same time. And I think they got bought out by Louisville, correct, Fontaine? Yeah, and that's that's how Louisville got into the uh, okay. into the composite sticks, okay. if if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, <laughs> my memory slips too, but but that's how that's how I remember it happening. You know, Louisville was um, obviously a uh, you know a, a, a successful like boutique brand in hockey, and and they, they had long standing brand history. Yeah. Um, and they were killing it on the glove side, absolutely killing it in the mid nineties. The gloves were, were fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know, they, they were mostly a wood stick company, um, un- until they, they managed to, uh, um, get in with their, um, rubber and tricor. And I don't know if something preceded that or not, but that was like later in the nineties yeah. as, as the, as composite. Uh, shafts had had become established at that point. They they definitely made a made a move to get in it. Yes, and uh, so we talk about composite. What about the company called Bush? Mm-hmm. Was that the real first one piece? I mean, I don't even know if they had graphite. Do you know anything about the Bush? Thing? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was graphite, you know. But it was but their their manufacturing was completely different. You know, the the. Uh, it was. Um, I'm not even sure if it was bladder molding, but it was. It was. It was one big mold for sure, and it was. Okay. It was. You know, I think it was a true one, but but it, they couldn't. Um, it wasn't a design where they could uh, manipulate flex points very well, you know. So it was a super super stiff stick, you know. And, and yeah. you saw the guys who would use it. Like again, uh, you know, again speaking of Kovalev, he was a guy who used the bush stick for a while. But you know, he used the the guy used the crowbar. Like he just used he yeah. used such a stiff stick, um, <laughs> and heavy. And it and heavy. Yeah, it was stiff. But and it was it was so durable. You know, like, oh, I remember yeah. they had they had like a I don't want to say lifetime warranty, but they had some stupid warranty on that thing at some point because it was also really expensive. You know, it was yeah. it was much more expensive than the hundred fifty dollars synergy when it came out. I know um, the price. It was three hundred twenty-five dollars. Is what I saw. It was, it. it was nuts, man. It was, yeah. you know, and they they had some pro exposure, and, and you know, after the synergy did well, they 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 changed some things. Like they, they I don't, I'm not sure what they did with their manufacturing to to change some shapes and and uh, we take some weight out of the product, but um, you know, they softened things up. I know Larianoff used it for a while. Kova, yeah. Kova uh, Fedorov, maybe they had a few guys on Detroit in the. Um, late 90s early 2000 no yeah like early mid 2000s they had some guys yeah um but it was uh i'll tell you again just to date myself you do you remember cupolos yes the hockey company of course yeah in ontario yeah, Canada. So, yeah. yeah 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 so so uh yeah i when i was a kid i would read the hockey news and every every thanksgiving cupolos would have a blowout <laughs> and the, and it was you know and they'd have like a big like a two page spread in, in in the hockey news, seeing like what products were on sale when you know and it wasn't it wasn't for the four days it was like a four hour window on each day, you know so and you're, you're basically on the phone mm-hmm. and I don't know how many lines they had but you know like you're waiting and you you get a busy signals and finally you get through it so they had they had a deal going um, uh, if you bought a pair of Yofa gloves, like the 686 leather Yofas, they give you they gave you a, a free graph composite stick, which I think was maybe the first thing that, that uh, Bush did, but not under their own brand. Ah. Um, it was <laughs> it was so stiff. So <laughs> I, I and I'm, I'm I really regret not keeping that thing, but you know I was like 15 whatever years old, like I had no idea what this this meant in, in terms of the history of sticks. But I, I, you know, so I, I had my, I had my Yofa gloves and I was like, at that time I was using like, you know, whatever, whatever was on sale in like the, in the, uh, in the pro bin at, at, you know, Jerry Cosby's in, in Manhattan. Um, but I, I, I took the stick and like, I just, I, I went out, we were playing outdoor hockey, like, and it was after Thanksgiving, right? So I was all pumped. This thing was so stiff. I couldn't do anything with it. You know, I never mind the curve. I don't remember any of that, but like, if you got a hold of the puck, like you ripped it, but I I had to lean everything into it to try to get that puck going, man. It, and it was uh, not a light stick, no. It but was it good. was uh yeah, it was branded graph. 
that's, and, that's uh, later I, on. I mean, and, and they gave they gave one free with with a glove <laughs> purchase, or maybe it was like a glove and helmet purchase. I don't know, but it was free. That's a man. deal. So, that's a deal. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it was. Uh, it's not something that I, I want to say. I gave it away to someone. You know, like I, I, I absolutely did not. Uh, maybe if I paid a hundred bucks for it at the time, I would have. I would have. Uh, uh, you know, put a little more time into seeing if I could use it. But man, that thing was um, was stiff as a board. Uh, and you know, when I'm I'm talking mid like late eighties. It was after the Titan Turbo, so um, late eighties, maybe let's say. And uh, oh. yeah, yeah, it just wasn't happening. It just was not happening. So. Yeah. Oh. Um, I knew a guy yeah, that had it. He said he uh, yeah. it lasted him a whole season in the American League. So he played eighty games with it. That's pretty good. His name is Chad. That's yeah, fantastic. Yeah, that's a good deal. Well, that early one was it suffered from the same things that that graphite tennis rackets was suffering from at the time. Like it, it cracked on the inside, so it was rattling. Oh. Like it's, it's so, so I could still shoot with it, but it was like I had like a rattle toy inside the stick at some point. I just remembered that. Yeah, so it was it was an interesting uh, interesting exercise on their part, but again, I, I think it was a situation where you know they, they saw what the Titan Turbo was doing, yeah, and um, they were trying to like compete with the technology, you know. So was Titan yeah. Turbo composite or was it uh, ABS plastic? That's the one Bossy used to use. Mike yeah, Bossy. yeah, it's and uh, and Gartner, Gartner yeah, used Gartner. to use that too. It was. Uh, I have one. It's fiberglass. Oh, it's, it's fiberglass. Like, it's, uh, yeah, it's fi- It's a hollow fiberglass. Oh, really? With the uh, with like the uh, the um, um, what do you call that? Like the 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 Titan blade, right? So the yeah. ABS, ABS uh, blade. sandwich blade with like yeah. the with the wood veneer on it. Um, yeah, I have a, my one of my one of my hockey buddies he kept one of his old ones and he gave it to me just to just to have in my collection. Um, yeah, it was, and it was, and he's, he's not that tall and, and this thing was still really heavy. Um, but I, I will tell you this, that the, the, uh, the man who invented it at, at, uh, was, was running the hockey, was there something in hockey in, uh, at the, at the hockey company in the early, early two thousands and, and at trade show, he did pull me aside. He's like, Hey, you know, I, I know, I know you say you have the first one piece stick, but yeah, don't forget the Titan Turbo. That was a one piece. I just like, oh, I, I can't argue that. I mean, for, it wasn't first graphite one piece, but yes, it was. A, it was a one piece. We're talking um, 84, 85, uh, That the, around that time they had those Titan Turbos. Around that yeah, time, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, it, they had a run, maybe about like a five, seven year run. You know, uh, but yeah, I, I, I remember, and I don't know if they did anything different for Bossy. Um, for his sticks, uh, but back then, you know, it was like uh, the weight of the stick wasn't really something that guys no. necessarily fixated on. You know, it wasn't yeah. like I remember the first light, truly light performance stick I used was the Sherwood uh, seventy thirty. Oh yeah, that thing was amazing. That thing was so they, they didn't hold up that great, but they were fantastic. Yeah, they were such good sticks. Yeah, and you can curve them real easy, no problem bending them. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yep. Did you ever um, uh, see the Coho XL? Remember the Coho XL that was kind of like oval shape mm-hmm, handle mm-hmm, and yep, it looked like it was yep. electrical tape. Yeah. What were those composite <laughs> yeah. or no? Were, I think they were just a different version of the turbo because uh, okay. I think I want to say there were those companies were affiliated at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so yeah, I think I think uh, uh, I might. I don't know. They, they, they definitely were affiliated at some point. I'm not sure if they were then, but um, you know, like uh, there was maybe it was just like Titan Yofa was uh, was a company. Like they both brands were under the same umbrella. Car- I'm not Car-ru. sure who Coho was Car-ru. at the time. It was called Car-ru. yeah. Co- Coho was under Caru, and then yeah. Caru went under the same umbrella as Titan Yofa at some point. But maybe it wasn't at that point. Yeah, I remember. Uh, I remember Rod Langway and his uh, his Coho XL gloves. I think Dennis Potvin wore them too. Like they were. That was the first like real concept glove too, you know. Like it was a like stamped foam. It wasn't like traditional cut and sew. And they were really uncomfortable, but they were super light. Yeah, they were. Um, light. So the yeah the the XL was just it was oval, man. Like it was the, again, it was like a precursor to some other uh, like geometry designs. But it like I, your hands got wet and the thing just turned. Like I, you know, just didn't didn't really work for me. Yeah. Um, 
But, um, yeah, but I mean, when you when you look at where these, you know, like I said earlier, I mentioned Cosby's. Like, I remember when I was younger, you know, we go, um, Robbie Fratoric was a ranger, and uh, he used the code uh, 221, like a reinforced one. Like, I think it was like fiberglass over it, but it was a, basically a 221. And uh, he, had a, he, he was a lefty, I'm a righty. But he had such a slight curve, and he was so finicky about his sticks that there would be like his his rejects would be available in the store all the time, and and they would just they'd have him like you know just sitting upside down in the bin. For, it was like an eight dollar bin. Wow. So that was my go to, you know. And once being the idiot that I am, I'm like, hey, I could bend this. Let me just try this out. And it was unreal, man. So I basically took a lefty curve and heated it up and put it under <laughs> the door and. It, it kind of ended up with, with pretty aggressive toe curve, <laughs> a righty toe curve, but absolute rockets. You know, wow. I, I couldn't do anything else with it, but you could shoot the daylights out of that. And it lasted maybe three games because obviously I, you know, bent the blade the wrong way. Wow. But <laughs> part of that was because it was curved the other way, like the the uh, the trampoline off the face of the blade. Uh-huh. Uh, was more like it held its shape better, so you could shoot really hard. Wow! Yeah, I just it was uh, again at that age I wasn't recognizing why it was doing that, but it was doing it. It was eight bucks, so I kept doing it as long as as long as Fatoric was rejecting his sticks. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it's you know, and right. and then I and then you know the synergy comes out, and I seriously had to put a letter out to the teams like, hey, stop shaving. And heating like this, you, <laughs> you can't, can't do that. It. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there were there were guys, you know. Cause, I mean, some of right, you you know, there were there guys who that's just their routine. You know, they yeah. they go in and they shape their blades and they play with their sticks and they tape their sticks, you know, before the game, and that's just what they do. Yeah. Um, and so I would have guys that would like go and like shave shave the the edges, shave the bottom, and you know what happens to a composite stick when that oh, when yeah. that seam goes he just splits <laughs> so good. so they're getting like they're getting one game out of these sticks and you know i'm getting the pro rep is calling say oh man so and so it would you know i think it was like the islanders were really unhappy they uh, just yeah he's his uh his guy these sticks aren't lasting a full game i'm like I, can you send me a couple <laughs> so he hasn't seen them himself right yeah. so he sent me and so we cut the we cut the tape off i'm with my like a couple of my r&b guys and we cut the tape off and we look at the blade and we look at each other and we just like start laughing. He's like, what, what do you think is good? Like, it just doesn't, that's not how it works. <laughs> no education but, on sticks. But, but, you know, but guys don't know at that point, no, right? No. They have no idea, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so there was, there was definitely a learning curve involved for sure, you know? Yes. And, and, uh, yeah, so some of the fun stuff we used to do uh, with uh, with sticks and blades, you can't you can't really do. Guys continue to like there were there were great guys who would like uh, use a like a like a pliner, is that what it's called? Pliner. Like a plane, yeah, the, the tool. On, on like yeah. the yeah on on like the shaft edges, like they were trying to like create more of a bevel or to like shave it. I'm just like looking at that, I'm like, oh man, this is like it's not good. All right, I mean. Yeah, I mean, you're in the NHL. If they're going to pay for them, sure. You know, you'll, you'll get some use out of it, but it's going to snap on you, you know. I'm yeah. Like, hey. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you, you there are definitely things happening that you wouldn't expect to be to see. Yeah. Uh, 